everyone in this book is kind of fucked up, if we're being completely honest. It's time for the 13 Nights of Sarah-Wee. Hey besties, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a scavenger hunt. I've seen this done a few times on booktube and I've always really wanted to do it myself. And Riley just so happened to announce that she wanted to do this reading challenge with her patrons. So I said, Riley, can I film this for Sarah Weed? And she said, of course. Riley has cooked up 10 really awesome reading prompts challenge prompts, I don't really know what you call them, but a list of 10 things that are going to lead me to the book that I hope will become a new favorite. And so I thought it might be fun to start here at home and then head on over to Barnes and Noble and we'll see what we can find. I'm really hoping that I find a book that I maybe have never heard of or that I've been really anticipating reading. I don't know, just something that I'm not expecting. I'm very excited. I'm also hoping to pick either like a thriller or a horror. So number one, to start, Pick a book you gave five stars, then find another book you would recommend to people who liked that book. Okay, I know exactly what we're gonna do for this. The books are over here. All right, we've got, okay, this is hard to get down. I didn't really think this through. I should have gotten that down before I did all that. Anyway, Half a Soul. If you like this book, you are going to absolutely like Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of fairies. These books both have socially awkward main characters and there are fae involved, but I gave both of these five stars and I really feel like you would like both of them if you liked one of them, if that makes any sense. Anyway, so this is the book we've ended up with for number one. Okay, so prompt number two says, count the number of letters in the title, then pick a random spot on your bookshelf and count to that number. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies has a lot of letters, so we're gonna have to count this right now on camera. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 33 letters. I will say I'm better at counting than I am at math, so I'm very grateful that there was no math involved. So now that we know we need to count 33 books on a shelf, we're going to head out to Barnes & Noble, and we will start there. We're gonna find a random shelf in the store and count to 33 and hope that no one is staring at us. Once I arrived to Barnes & Noble, I headed over to the hardcover bestseller section and I counted to 33 books on a random shelf. This led me to A Most Agreeable Murder by Julia Seals. Prompt number three is to look at what is on the cover, find another book with one of those elements in the title. Okay, on this very cute cover, I saw a book, a sword, a house, a gem, and a letter. I went to the fantasy section because that's where I felt like it was most likely to see those items on a cover. I saw a few options I could go with, but I chose The Book Eater by Suni Dean because it has book in the title. Prompt number four is to reverse the page number of your book and find another book with the page count closest to that number. 294 reversed is 492 pages. I stayed in the fantasy section because them bitches be long and are likely to have 492 pages. I tried a few books, but I kept striking out. This number was so specific. I had a feeling that City of Brass might be my girl, which by the way, it's an amazing fantasy book that you should absolutely read. Okay, she had 526 pages, but I decided that was close enough. Prompt five is list some of the tropes of your book and then find another book that shares one of those tropes. City of Brass has quite a few tropes, like the chosen one, orphan hero, veiled magic, but I decided to go with Marriage of Convenience because I had the perfect book in mind. Both City of Brass and The Duchess Deal by Tessa Dare have this trope and they're both historical settings. Prompt number six is find a book that has the same color combination to your book. I knew right away that I'd be able to find something with these sunset -y shades in the contemporary romance section. After some digging, I thought that The Good Girl Complex by L. Kennedy had the same pinks and oranges. Prompt number seven is read the first sentence, pick any word in that sentence, and find a book with that word in the title or pictured on the cover. The first sentence was, I'm up to my eyeballs in Jaeger bombs, which was an interesting choice. I immediately knew I'd need to find something that visually had eyes on the cover because I don't think there's many books with Jaeger bomb in the title. And is this random Nobel Prize book not perfect? It has so many eyeballs. Prompt number eight is turn to the acknowledgements and the first name you see, find a book written by an author with that same name. The first name I saw was Anna. So I headed on over to the mystery section to mix things up. And I found a book called A Wicked Conceit by Anna Lee Huber. Huber, Lee Huber, I don't know how to say her name. Prompt number nine is look at that cover and find a book that has a similar looking cover. I immediately thought of the Lady Sherlock series. And is this not literally the same cover? The final prompt requires some math. It's add your birth month and day together turn to that page number in your book and pick any word on that page and find a book with that word in the title. My birthday is January 20th, so the page number I'm looking for is 21. The first word that jumped out to me was lock. 
I searched high and low in the horror section for a book with Locke in the title, but I couldn't find one, so I decided to cheat and I picked Brother by Anya Alborn because it had a Locke on the cover visually instead of in the title. I know I probably could have chosen something like Lock Every Door by Riley Saker, but I DNF'd that book and I have no intention of reading it, and Brother is actually conveniently already on my TBR, so I'm very excited to read it! Okay, Bessie, so as you saw in the clips before this, the book that we ended up with is Brother by Anya Alborn. I am am already 158 pages into this and I am really enjoying it. It's a very fast read. I started reading it earlier today and I didn't realize it was going to get so far. So this follows a family that lives in the middle of nowhere in West Virginia and our main character is a guy named Michael and Michael just doesn't really fit in with his family because they are a group of murderers and they're very evil. He just never has really felt like he fit in. He doesn't really enjoy what they do. His mother specifically likes to kidnap young girls and kill them. The opening of this book was actually really compelling because it's a scene where one of the girls has broken loose from the basement and so the whole family is trying to gather her up and get her back into her place so that they can kill her. And Michael obviously feels very sick about these things that they do. I feel like his job is often to like hunt things like hunt dead people down like get the kills for his mother and his brother rebel is honestly crazy as shit he is a really bad character honestly i feel like he's the bigger villain of the story like yes the mother isn't great and she like beats all the children and she's just she's not a great mother but rebel is honestly psychotic he, re he really is and so where i'm at in the book rebel and michael have actually been meeting up with these girls at a record store in town and having some relationships and so michael really likes this girl named alice and i have bad feelings for Alice like bad vibes like I I don't know if Alice is going to survive this story especially because Rebel hates his brother I don't think Michael realizes how much Rebel hates him but Rebel is like really really mean to him so yeah I'm just really enjoying this because I love the complicated family dynamics and it's giving like the hills have eyes except for they don't eat the people I'm not sure if they eat the people to be honest it's been like hinting at some things that I'm like do they eat these people I am just curious to know more and more about what is going on with this family and i'm love love loving because as you guys know i've been striking out with horror a lot lately and so to finally find a horror that i enjoy for the most part is really exciting this is really feeling like a four star book for me hopefully i will update you guys soon i'm actually going to a concert tonight and so I can't really read while well, I'm at the concert. I'm seeing Yashniko. So I haven't been to a concert in a really long time. I guess I went to Arrow's tour, but that's the last concert I went to. I'm not a big concert goer. I also don't really listen to music that often because I'm always listening to audiobooks or podcasts and reading and doing YouTube stuff. And so I don't know. I only really listen to music when I'm in the shower, but I went through a huge Yashniko phase, but I'm still excited for the concert. I feel like it's going to be a good time. And I'm hanging out with my friend Aspen. We used to be roommates and we don't really hang out that often anymore. So it's always really exciting to hang out with them and spend time together so we're gonna go to dinner and yeah so hopefully when i get home after the concert i probably won't get home until like 11 or 12 but i probably will read more of the book tonight because i am really trying to finish this because i have a really lengthy tbr for sarah ween and i kind of want to get through this and this video is supposed to go up on friday and today is tuesday i'm crazy but you like that i like back daisies on your nightstand never forget i blossom in the moonlight okay besties we're back from the concert we're in the car again and i really loved that concert it was really good ashiko is a really good performer and i love her music i will say i'm not super familiar with her most recent albums there was a couple of songs where i just kind of like bobbed my head i will say the opening act was was bad it was this other female rapper named tommy genesis and mm -mm, very bad no offense tommy no offense if you're watching this but it was bad it was really bad no the stage presence was confounding it was very weird but i just i thoroughly enjoyed ashniko and she performed like all of her best songs and it was just really exciting and i really really enjoyed it also we made some concert friends there was these like two people standing next to me in Aspen it was like a girl and a guy and they were both like really young I thought they were like in their mid-20s and then the guy was like I just turned 18 and I was like and then I was like what year were you born and he was like 2005 and I was like you weren't even alive for 9-11 it really made me feel old I feel like I'm one of those boomers like you know how boomers can't stop talking about how young someone is that was me that was me i am becoming a boomer genuinely um which which was interesting also he gave me a little bracelet that says invitation on it which is a nash nico song that is great she performed it it's one of my favorite songs it's so good you should listen to it if you've never listened to ash nico i think invitation would be a great first song because it's all about consent and saying no and it's just it's so good i love ash nico i love her message her music is very like female rage vibe so if you enjoy like very crass like female rappers who are just like angry and like 
singing about like women's problems and and just equality and stuff like it's her music is like chef's kiss also it was so fucking hot like i was sweating my ass off i genuinely was like the next time i go to a concert i'm gonna dress slutty as hell because i needed a breeze i really did i should have wore the shortest skirt also that would have been very fitting for ashniko because she's all about like female empowerment and whatnot but anyway it was fun and now i'm gonna drive home and i'm gonna listen to more of brother and it's gonna be a great time Okay, besties, I am on page 237. A lot of stuff has been going on and I'm a little bit confused about where the story's been going. I had some like predictions in my head about like what was gonna happen and the stuff that I thought was gonna happen isn't happening. I mean, there's definitely been a few things that I kind of saw coming. I know I'm being super vague right now. I don't really wanna give spoilers, obviously, cause I do like this book. So I want you guys to read it if it sounds interesting to you. Cause I don't normally do vlogs dedicated to one book on my channel unless it's on patreon i'm curious where the rest of the story is gonna go because there have been some deaths and some things going on it's not a perfect five star book by any means and i definitely don't think it's gonna be like my favorite book of all time but it is really entertaining and i feel like if a book compels me to finish it in one sitting then you know that's a good thing. I would love for the ending to be even more action-packed than what's been in here. Cause I wouldn't say that, the, that it's been like, oh my God, so much stuff is happening like every page, but it's like the story is just interesting. And I like Michael as a main character. Like, I, I don't know. I'm just waiting for a little je ne sais quoi. I'm hoping for the best. I mean, I say best lightly because this is a very dark book and I, and I don't think that it's gonna end with a happily ever after. I, I really truly don't. Everyone in this book is kind of fucked up if we're being completely honest. All right, besties, I have finished Brother, and I think my final rating for this is gonna be three and a half stars because it didn't really go in the directions that I wanted it to go. And there's this one catalyst event for like everything that goes on in this book in one of the past scenes that never really made sense to me and didn't really get explained, but it's kind of why everything ends up happening in this book. I feel like we just didn't find out enough about why the mom was like so obsessed with like killing girls and the husband, like the dad, he was always just kind of there. He was just Ken in a very evil way. I'm an endings girl, I really am. And this ending, it didn't disappoint me like 100%. I would probably, if I was gonna rate this out of like 10 stars, I would say this is like a seven out of 10, but for like a Goodreads rating, three and a half. Oh, that makes sense, because three and a half, seven. I just feel like seven out of 10 sounds so much better than three and a half out of five. Am I crazy for thinking that? I did enjoy this, it was a good time, and I read this all in one day. If you ever see me putting this on a recommendation list, it's because I do think that there's a lot of people who would really enjoy this, and for the most part, I did really enjoy my reading experience. I feel like I am over explaining myself right now because I know that I've had a track record lately of not liking the things that I've been reading, but I really did like this. It's just, I'm very precious about what books I give four and five stars. And so I don't like to round up unless I really feel like the book is worth that. But I really enjoyed this and I definitely want to read more from Anya Alborn. I know that she's written quite a few other horror novels and I feel like a lot of people like The Shuddering. That's like a monster horror from her. I'm thinking about reading The Shuddering for the readathon I'm doing with my patrons this month. If you wanna join my Patreon, you can because the last weekend of October, we're doing Sarah Weenathon and we're doing a three day readathon Friday to Sunday. And not only do we have a bunch of reading prompts like a bingo board, like reading challenges, but we're also doing a movie night where we watch Jennifer's Body and then we're doing reading sprints. But yeah, that kind of sums up my thoughts. I hope that you enjoyed the scavenger hunt portion of this video as well as the reading vlog. I am so grateful to Riley for allowing me to do her Patreon scavenger hunt for my main channel. If you haven't seen her scavenger hunt video, I will totally link it down below because she already posted hers. It was really good. So I highly recommend watching that vlog. I love Riley's vlogs. They are honestly some of my favorites to watch on booktube. If you've made it to the end of this video and you enjoyed it, feel free to use the lock emoji in your comment because there is a lock on the cover here. Also, please let me know if you've read this and what you thought of it. Did you like it? Did you not like it? And if you have any recommendations for me of books that kind of feel like this, that are just like really fast paced and have like an interesting vibe, I definitely would be interested in reading more books like this. So yeah, I thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.